Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on the Slant Lens, we've got the news of a new camera from Sony, the Sony A1. It is, is a blockbuster <laughs> camera. <laughs> it's like everything and the kitchen sink dumped into one mirrorless camera body. But there's cool. one thing that it doesn't do, and that is it doesn't <laughs> articulate its screen, which I don't understand. <laughs> I, I knew that was going to come up almost immediately. Uh, it does not articulate the screen. Which, you know, if you're a still photographer, that doesn't matter to you as much, you know, because you're going to pop that screen out, you're going to use it below you. It's, it's pretty easy to use. Some still photographers can't stand having to use that out to the side. Right. So from right. a still photography standpoint, it's not such a bad thing. But from a video standpoint, it's a little bit of a cripple. And everyone goes, oh, we just want to use it for vlogging. No, it's not for that. But anyway, let's get past that. There's a million other things. <laughs> well, let's get into some of the specs of this camera. This is a 50 megapixel uh, camera. It'll shoot 30 frames a second up to 150 frames if you're doing still work. But really, the big thing about this camera is 8K. You know, we've heard 8K before. And 8K always makes me groan because, you know, of course, the R R5 and the whole yeah. 8K debacle there. You know, Which but this is only marginally better, it seems. The recording limit is what thirty minutes. They said if you let it, if you set the heat tolerance to the highest level, um, yes, it'll record for thirty minutes. And they're not saying how long it will take to cool off uh, once you power down. So I, I still think the eight K thing is such a gimmick. But it uh, does it do four K, four two two, ten bit up to one hundred and twenty frames per second, which is amazing. It, it is. It brings it all. But I've always thought that was a great marketing uh, kind of position. You take a camera and you put everything in it, but it's six thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the question. So, Mike, how does this compete in terms of segments? You know, if you are a just a stills photographer, you don't care about eight K video, you don't care about four two two or S log or any of that. Um, why would you buy this over the R five or the Z seven well, Mark two? You wouldn't. You would buy the R5. I'm thinking in the Sony, li Sony lineup, if I am in the Sony ecosystem and I just do stills, I would probably buy the R4. I've got a large mm. megapixel image. I've got, and I don't need to spend the $6,000. You know, yeah. so this really becomes a camera about, you know, pick A, B, C. You know, you got A7S3, you've got the A7R3, you got the A7R4, you know, you got the A9, you know, or take the one that has it all. You know, but you're gonna have to pay six thousand dollars for it. In my mind, this is really, in some ways, a big blow to Canon because they have the C70, which is launching right now, and uh, this outplays the C70 in it seems on paper, all respects. I mean, it has the 4K Super 35, 422, 10-bit with, uh, but it has image stabilization and it has an incredible EVF. We haven't even talked about the 9.4 yeah. million dot EVF that. It refreshes at 240 frames per second. So it's That's crushing incredible. it's crushing the C70 out of the gate and it, it also is. does really high resolution stills. Um yeah, and which the C70 does not shoot stills at all. So. No, it doesn't shoot stills, it doesn't have IBIS, it doesn't have an EVF. I mean, where does the C70 win in this equation? No, yeah, it makes I, no sense. I do feel like this checks all the boxes in the stills category and in the video category and it is going to be hard to compete with that um for the other companies in terms of hybrid. You know, they, they can launch a C200 Mark II or something like that, but it's just hard to compete uh, with a camera that does it all. Well, if you're really <laughs> on a high-end, high, you're a high-end shooter doing high-end sports, doing video, like I think of my friend who shoots for Chevron and travels around the world, this is a perfect camera. So if you're a wedding photographer, would you buy this camera? Would there be a reason to buy this mm. camera? I don't spend know. that money you could buy two or three other cameras <laughs> yeah if i was a wedding photographer i would probably go for something low you know something that costs 25 i go for an r6 couple r6s i, I think as an event or wedding photographer it would be better to have two bodies on you all the time with two different lenses you would do better work that way than having the latest and greatest so who do you feel like this is targeted towards i mean we've talked about weddings if you are a photojournalist do you buy this camera I think I so. I don't think you're getting paid enough to buy this camera if you're photo yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe they'll lend you this camera from the <laughs> wherever you're shooting for. <laughs> I think if, I think photojournalists will invest in this camera. I think they will. I think uh, any kind of sports shooters, if you're doing any kind of Olympic events or uh, sports on any level, you're going to have this camera. 
The, tra I think you are right in terms of not just travel photography, but there are several photographers that I follow who do travel all the time for work, and they are doing a lot of stills work, landscapes, wildlife, but they're yep. also shooting a lot of video content for whoever is commissioning the work. So I, I suppose there is a market for it, but it's definitely a niche. I mean, this isn't this is not a hobbyist camera by any means. <laughs> no, this is this is way beyond hobbyist camera. This is this is a full on professional, you know, you're gonna have to spend for what you get uh, kind of camera. And like I say, my friend who travels the world and shoots video and stills for Chevron, different companies. I mean, this is a perfect camera. He's got it all in one package there to be able to shoot. I think this is a great camera for fashion and studio photographers because yeah. A lot of those guys are doing uh, little video vignettes and things like that in the studio as well, so you can switch back and forth pretty quickly. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to be able to shoot really high frame rates. I think this camera really becomes a great companion to a Venice in that ecosystem. You now can use it as B-cam on, on set. I think this is really going to be an on-set camera in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, if you if you own something like an FX9 or maybe the new FX6 or something, this this could be a good companion for it, especially because not only will it serve as your video B cam, but you can grab the stills you need for the client right there on set, uh, and they'll be really nice and high quality. I did this the other day with my Panasonic, and uh, I use Leica R lenses on it, so I'm shooting stills with a you know manual focus lens, and it's not a big deal, but it was a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not quite as seamless as some of the other no. <laughs> setups. No. So, well, it'll be interesting to see how, when it comes out when we start to test it, see exactly what it does. So, I'm I'm excited to get it in our hands, and I hope to see that happen very soon. So we can take let a look know, at it. And... Let us know what we should test this against. I'm curious what Great this idea. is competing against with the other brands, um, and what people will you know if you're in the market for this camera or something like this. What else are you looking at? Because we'd like to know. All right, like Kenneth said, let us know what we should test on this camera. We'll get it in our hands as soon as we can and take a look at it, run it through the paces and see if it's as amazing as it looks right now on paper. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.